Hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at the results of last week's auction picks. Up first, the Nissan Silvia Ks. This one was unsold and only got bid up to 5500 The Toyota Mark II was also unsold, and that one only got bid up to 5450 The Nissan Laurel did sell, and that one went for just 1160 The Subaru Impreza WRX went for much cheaper than expected. Somebody picked that one up for 1600 The Mazda Atenza did not sell. That one only saw 2,050 in bids. The Toyota Supra RZS did not sell. It was bid up to 24,370, but that still wasn't enough. And finally, the Celica GT4 did sell, and that one went for just 2,430. That's gonna do it for last week's picks. Now here's Derek with this week's. Hey guys, it's Derek here. Guess what? It's time to look at cars for auction coming up in Japan um, and uh, see what you guys picked. Thanks, Andrew, for showing us the prices of last week. And hopefully I wasn't too far off in my price guesses for those ones. We got 10 cars this time, which is a little bit much, especially for how busy I am right now. It is the busy season right now as a lot of people are buying cars for the springtime. So jump right into it. We got the thumbnail pick here. And I picked this one because a lot of people this week have been spying one of these in the back of the lot and have been saying, hey, are we getting a video of that car? And the answer, unfortunately, is no for that. But we've had so many people ask about it. And then I'm sure there are a lot of people who don't really know what this kind of car is. And so back in the 1980s, BMW kicked a lot of butt with their M3 in DTM, I think it was DTM racing, some sort of a German touring car racing. And uh, Mercedes-Benz was like, you can't have all the cake. And so they had a car that competes with it with a Cosworth twin cam 2.3 liter engine which is the same size as the m3 engine from the e30 and so this is it it's kind of unassuming looking but you do get blistered fenders on it and you get a really cool engine in it and it's a it's a torquey engine with a lot of power all throughout the rev range but it's not a super high power engine by today's standards you can get them in automatic and manual which is kind of cool because the m3 you can only get in manual, so if you wanted an auto, it kind of takes some of the specialness away, but you can get it. And they did, with a manual, come with a dogleg transmission box, which is a little bit weird for people who don't know. First gear is down and to the left, and then you go into the regular gears, and they are in an H pattern. So it's very easy to shift and not easy to miss shift. So this one's a 5-speed manual. 2.316 valve later on they turned into a 2.516 valve with a slightly bigger engine still a Cosworth twin cam engine 108 409 kilometers auction rate R interior B okay and uh, exterior paint fade right front inner panel and core support have uh, accident damage that has been repaired body looks to be pretty good and these sell for lots of money but a good few steps lower than the M3 which is funny because these are actually a rarer car than the E30 M3 but they cost less because I think the E30 M3 just looks so great. And I think it's probably box fenders that raise the price up, honestly. Okay, so for price of this one, I'm going to guess 1.2 mm, million yen for this one. Okay, we got a starting price of 1 million. And they do sell for a lot, but the price is only on the way up. And it's continuing to go up. So, good car. You do have to worry a little bit about build quality. But if you're going to pay that much money for a car, then... A few thousand extra dollars for some refurbishment isn't that much. Okay, thank you, Raymond, you for sending that one in. Next one, Bill Courtney. You are a man of my heart. You picked a Nissan Sunny. This is, uh, what is this car called outside of Japan? I don't know. But it's a Sunny California, which is the fastback, fastback wagon. I don't know. It's a four-door with a hatch, but it's not quite station wagon size. Kind of small car. And uh, really love these. This one has four-wheel drive, too, and so that gets three thumbs up. And yellow fog lights, there you get your fourth thumb up for that. Cool Japanese looks. You got sunroof. Condition's not great. Look at the body here. A lot of dents on it. Big dents in various places. The sunroof is broken on it. Engine oil leak, underside service rust. Electric folding mirrors don't work. Kind of weird for a 19... Uh, or This is a 1990 car, but... It looks like a 1982 car, and so folding mirrors is cool to have on a car that old. Super Saloon. Hmm. Sunny California Super Saloon. Auction grade 3, exterior D, interior E. 
and I'm kind of jumping all over this place. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to speed this up so that I can get complete, so I can go <laughs> shoot some reports at the lot today because I got a lot of cars that's completely full. Uh, seat is ripped and um, seat wear. Door card is ripped. Stereo has been removed. Bumper underside scratched and um, tinted windows on the car. So condition's not that good. Mileage is high. Uh, color change to beige. It wasn't originally beige. I think it looks awesome in this color. And I think these wheels are pretty killer. And so I'm not sure about the price of this one. I've been thinking about it a lot because we had a customer or a, a close friend of mine wanted to get a, a translation of this and wanted to possibly bid on it. And so I think that we'll probably see this one selling for around 200,000 yen. Okay, on to the next one. Yoani Esparza sent in some, what would normally be clickbait, but we got the E190 on there for some reason. <laughs> but it's an NSX with lots of body modifications to make it look pretty cool. Side skirts, front bumper, big rear wing. Okay, and stock exhaust. Very cool. Okay, uh, interior is black with red. Very descriptive, Derek, you're doing a good job. And auction sheet here, 1991 NSX, of course a three liter engine, later models had a 3.2, but this is the NA1, so that's the early model. Auction grade R, interior C, importable to the USA because it's a 91 for the 25 year rule there. 158, 338 kilometers on it is rather high and an automatic transmission uh, makes it a little bit poopy. Um, power steering is shaky. This is the more I look at auction sheets for the automatic transmission version of these, the more I see this comment. So power steering gets notchy right at top dead center of the steering wheel, and it's kind of a problem. Well, it is a problem only with the power steering models. All the manual transmission ones have manual steering, no power steering. So I don't know, it's probably really expensive to fix that. The accident looks like it's pretty big, and this is a big problem on the NSX to have an accident because the entire car, including the chassis, is all made out of aluminum. And aluminum doesn't react the same way as steel does when it's in an accident, so repairing it is not as easy to do it properly. And I think I would be pretty worried about what that does to the structure of the aluminum after it's been repaired because I don't know if there's enough knowledge about that compared to steel. And so core support was replaced, right front side member dented, and right front inner panel dented. And then a bunch of things, aftermarket parts here. Uh, really nothing else that's uh, too important. Driver's seat is ripped, that kind of sucks, because the seats in this are pretty neat. They're not as adjustable as I'd like them to be, but the regular driving position works well for me. Okay, so I think that uh, we'll see this one at around one point seven million they would be a lot more expensive if it's a manual transmission though okay Louis Sen Sendoval I like that last name and this is a special car for me because this was my first ever dream car was one of these so being a kid who grew up in the 80s this car was just so cool they were so noisy when you pulled up to the uh, up against them on the streets i remember one time that my mom was at a light next to one of these guys and he was like brum, 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 brum. And he's like hey derek my mom said derek do you think that's really cool and i was like yeah that's so cool and then he peeled out and then drove off and then my mom was like that guy's a dick and i didn't understand what it was because i thought that the car was really cool so what about that made him a dick and so i still don't know and the chicken on the on the hood is very cool. I used to think that if you open the doors of these cars, then you could fly. And so you can tell why I really liked these cars as a kid. I had a model of one until I was like 20 years old or something. First ever car model I put together. Anyways, they're, they're not really good cars other than just the style of them. But prices are out their way, on their way up for them. It's 1979 Trans Am, uh, 6600 cc engine, 3.5 liter, uh, no. Grade, <laughs> grade 3.5 interior B, 62, 122 kilometers. And that's important because this is in kilometers. It's probably a Canadian model that was imported to Japan. Automatic transmission on there, alloy wheels. Those are the stock ones for the Trans Am. <clears throat> or the Firebird, I guess. Firebird Trans Am, yeah. Okay, I think this is the big engine. 
I don't know enough about muscle cars. That's one of my big weaknesses. And so people in the comments, if you know about this car, let me know because I'd like to know more. Exterior has some paint cracks and some paint fade oil leak. Underside has surface rust and corrosion and the AC doesn't work. Otherwise, the body is not bad. American cars are made out of nice thick steel and so they don't dent as much as Japanese cars do. Looks like the condition overall is pretty good. As for price, I'm way out of my league when it comes to this one, so I don't know. Starts at 1.25. Possibly, I can see, well, mm, I'll say 2.5 2 and then I don't think that's too high or too low. So hopefully I'll get that pretty pretty close I could be way off on that one though all right next one Noah Adrian sent in this bad boy had to pick it because it is an RX-7 that is really awesome and it has Mazda speed wheels on it look at that these are some of the ugliest wheels but I adore ugly wheels and so if you are like me and you like weird things they're probably pretty hard to come by if you really wanted some I don't expect many people would really want some though Okay, so it's the year 2000, which I think is the third third to last year of these, 2002 being the last year. Okay, type RB, in, and it's a grade 3.5, interior, exterior, a B. Lots of stuff on here. Mazda Speed, rear spoiler, and bucket seat. That's cool. Current registration, 17-inch wheels with uh, Proxies R1R tires. Uh, a Nardi steering wheel with airbag. That's kind of cool. I guess that's the original steering wheels of Nardi in this. Oh, an automatic transmission. I only now realize that. So the car looks great inside out. These seats are awesome. And I've never seen them before, but like era Mazda speed seats for the RX-7 would be a very valuable thing. It might even pay you for your swap to a manual transmission. Look at that. Excellent. Okay, 101 for 17 kilometers. Uh, I think we'll probably see this one go for a pretty high price because it looks really good other than the automatic transmission. So I'm going to guess a million yen on this one. Okay, on to the next one, Cotton French. First time posting this one because I definitely would remember your name. Um, this is an FTO, and it's a car that not a lot of people know about. It's made by Mitsubishi, and the Evo kind of steals all the thunder from the FTO. This is a car that competes with kind of the front wheel drive Sprinter tr Truneau or Levin. It is a front wheel drive. It has a, uh, a, 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 a 2000 cc, but not a four cylinder. It's a V6. And I think it puts out either 180 or 200 horsepower, but very high horsepower per displacement. It's a different looking car. I think it's pretty good looking if it doesn't have this really ugly rear bumper and bad fitment and the ugly tail lights the spoiler i actually like because the original spoiler on this car is really dumb looking in my opinion the trunk is rather narrow compared to how wide the car is here and so the original spoiler follows the body line of the slope that comes up here or you can see it better on this way so it comes up this way and then the spoiler is so small by itself you can look up pictures on google if you want to if you want to see that but I think it's cool. It's a front wheel drive sporty car. And yeah, they're pretty rare these days. They were super ultra cheap for a very long time. And so that's a, uh, a recipe for running out of, of them here in Japan. TE37 wheels on it, mud flaps on the back. Oh no, just a bumper that looks like mud flaps. Okay, and uh, hyper red interior. <laughs> Somebody actually wanted their car to look like that. That's one of the things I find about these cars too, is typical owners of these cars don't have the same tastes as I do in cars. And so this kind of thing is common. Okay. The prices are up for them because they are rare now, in Japan at least. 171, 595 kilometers. It's a 1999 model. FTO GX uh, sports package. I don't know what the sports package entails. Auction grade 3.5 with an interior B purchase from user. Momo steering wheel, extra gauges that are in the car. It's kind of a cool little system. I don't know if that's stock or not, but if it's uh, aftermarket, that's kind of nice how the, the gauges would fit one panel here together with the vents and the AC. Same AC unit as in the Evos. Double DIN Navi screen that looks like it wasn't installed properly. And then wrap yourself carbon fiber trim with a broken shift surround and the boot not mounted properly. So it looks like it needs a little bit of work. Uh, what do we got here? Oil leak. Hood has been modified, aero parts are put onto the car, shift area is cracked, interior has some parts painted, exterior paint fade, and uh, 
exhaust is modified, headlights are cloudy, tail lights have been, been modified, <laughs> not very nicely by the look of it. Uh, underside scratched and dented, aftermarket wheels and suspension modified, body doesn't look too bad. The one U2 dent here is kind of a problem, but the A4 over here would be under the side skirt and so not really visible. As for price, uh, I'll probably, uh, let's see, um, 260,000 yen will be my guess on this. Okay, next one from Elijah McDonald. Sent in a CRX. You get to have your car on this video if you pick a CRX because CRXs are really cool cars. Like a Civic that's been chopped in the back. Cool wheels on it. Yokohama Advan wheels. Looks like the driver's seat is really nice. Looks like the passenger seat has the original CRX seat. I do really like these original seats uh, just because they're they're such a small lightweight seat compared to what you typically would get in most cars and I think that that's great because you keep the weight down and they're they're pretty comfy and adjustable properly and they tend to not wear out too much but a lot of CRXs have had their driver's seat uh, replaced because they're a pretty common car for a track car. Weird to see this with regular exhaust on it. The wrapping looks like it hasn't been done very well. That's unfortunate. Okay, 1991 CRX SI, 5-speed, 1600cc, auction grade R, interior and exterior B, 166, 255 kilometers, 5-speed manual, power steering, power windows, Advan 15-inch wheels, and a 15 actually looks reasonable on this car. I know you can go higher, but I think a 15 is good and will be really good for uh, performance-wise. Keep that weight down on the wheels. Recaro bucket seat, black, uh, with a black seat cover on it. That's kind of weird to have an aftermarket seat with a seat cover. Hmm. Aftermarket exhaust, aftermarket suspension, Momo steering wheel. Electric folding mirrors, front mount tower bar, keyless entry. Timing belt has been replaced at 140,000 kilometers. Okay. Rear floor and end panel dented. Front inner panel dented, oil leak. Exterior paint fade and stickers put on. Underside scratch and dented, various surface rust and corrosion, rear interior has holes for modification. So it looks like the condition needs a little bit of help. If you want to use this for a race car, it's probably in good uh, condition. Or you can buy it and you can restore it, or you can buy it and drive it as it is and just have a car that's a little bit weak. But, you know, 25-year-old cars are going to be a little bit weak. And I think that's a, one of the main things that you got to remember when you're buying a car for import to the USA is 25 years is a long time for a car to survive. Even amazing and reliable cars, they do need more maintenance than a brand new car would. And you have to be ready for that. In particular, ready to get parts that you wouldn't be able to get easily in the States. So do think about that. As for price of this, CRXs are pretty expensive. I'll say this one will probably go for 850,000 yen. Okay, Redneck Hunter sent in this one. Oh, what the heck is this? This, okay. Uh, Mitsuoka is a manufacturer in Japan that takes the chassis from other cars and then makes their own cars from it. Now, it, it, maybe you know about this car, maybe you don't, but try to think, just looking at these pictures, what car? Weep. What, <laughs> what car this is based off of and if you look really carefully you can get especially the interior because nothing has changed in the interior so if you're familiar with what car this interior goes to you'll be able to win and if not you'll have to take a look the only parts are the roof and the windshield and the doors are kept from the original car everything else has been changed and so this one is doo -doo -doo -doo. If you were wondering why I just moved that up. It's an S13, so it's a Nissan 240SX or 200SX or 180SX or whatever you want to call it. That has been converted into a pretty crazy looking car. And they didn't make many of these. They were actually a really uncommon car. Uh, I think they were pretty expensive. I don't remember exactly how many were made, but I'm thinking it's somewhere in the range of about 500 or so. So this is a 1991. It has a CA18 engine in it. It's called a Lasedo. Is the Japanese or Lased? Okay. Grade R because it's been in an accident. Interior B. Body looks good. It has repair marks on the sides and a cracked. Uh, let's see that. Do, do, do. Oh, we don't get a good rear view, do we? So it looks like a. 
your third brake light is cracked there. That might be hard to find if you want a replacement for it. Only 17,233 kilometers, maybe because somebody would be too embarrassed to drive around in this. Or it kind of looks like the type of car that you wouldn't drive very often, only on special occasions anyway. Or a car that you would buy if you're a car dealer and just have in your office so that people are like, wow, what's that? Because it is pretty amazing looking. And I've seen them in real life. They are pretty crazy. Interior liner comes up, underside surface rust. Uh, what is that? One part is ripped in this. I can't read what that says. Something one part ripped. Trunk floor dented and wrinkled rear frame bent section. Okay, so rear end accident. Probably somebody was looking at the rear like, what is that? And then forgot to press the brakes. Wheels, kind of crazy. Those would be a four bolt pattern because this car originally has a four bolt. So those wheels might be pretty hard to come by nowadays. I think that they would be exclusive to this car. And I really hope the spare tire is actually in there. That would be really cool. As far as price, these are all over the place when they sell, so it's hard to see a pattern. But I think that we'll see this one because it's importable to the USA. Because of the really low mileage, we may see this in the like 1.8 million range. So that's going to be my guess. 1.8 mil for this one. Okay, we got two more here. This one here just blew my mind. I absolutely want to have this car. So this is a Nissan March. Now they do make... I, my mind is confused in this. I believe they make a turbocharged version of this and a very limited edition version that comes with this big mouth bumper. So when I saw that bumper, I was like, that's the bumper from the turbo version, isn't it? But I don't, I, I was looking it up a couple of months ago and I couldn't find any information about it. And so I don't know what kind of special model it is that, that comes with that bumper. And I don't know if you can actually get these with a turbo from the factory, but my mind tells me yes. It looks like it has an adjustable rear wing, which is cool. Uh, these wheels are NK wheels. I think it's an RPF something or other. Big rear bumper, cool racing stripe on it, even though it's faded pretty badly. And so this is a Nissan March complete car from Tommy Kyra. And Tommy Kyra is a tuning company that does like Impreza's and Skylines and many of these uh, specialty versions of Japanese sports cars from the 80s and 90s. But Atomic Kyra, usually their cars are kind of ugly. And this one, I don't think is that ugly. And having the turbo on there, um, at least on this one, because you can see HKS Turbo Kit has been added. So I don't think the Atomic Kyra version originally came with the turbo. But having a turbo one liter in a tiny little car that probably weighs no more than 720 or 780 kilos, that's really cool. Auction grade 3.5, interior B, exterior B, 23,674 kilometers, but the mileage is actually unknown. Um, it's unknown because this the gauges have been changed. Nismo suspension on it, keyless entry, various modifications, so see yourself for details. Fujitsu Bow exhaust, NK wheels, bucket seat. Let's see if we get an interior picture. Ooh, that interior looks good, actually. I don't care for these seats that much, but I, I like how the interior looks. And I think that that is likely something that came from Tommy Kyra because the, the original ones weren't like that. Five-speed manual. It would be best if it was four-wheel drive, but I don't think that it is. Paint fade on the hood. Cracked windshield. Paint fade on the roof. Uh, boost controller added to it. Fender arches have been modified. Headlights are cloudy, oil leak, exterior paint fade and stickers put on, and one part is, I can't read what that says. Probably talking about how the sticker is coming off. Underside surface rust and corrosion, that kind of sucks, but with a car this, this unique or this fun and at the right price, that might be okay. Uh, rear chassis hook has a seal repair marks. Okay, steering wheel peeling and interior painted sections. Wheels scratched, very scratches and dents. Paint on the rear bumper is uneven, which means that the color won't match properly. So I don't know how many Tommy Kyra marches that they made. I, I think this car might be called the Micra in other, in other countries. I'm guessing they didn't make more than about 200 of them because I've never heard of it until today. And that's kind of weird 
uh, for me to not have heard of a special edition Tommy Kyra version of the car. And with their other cars, they usually made like 500 max, 500, 600 max um, for most of them. And then they would make, you know, add in a, another $8,000 to the price of the car with mild modifications and, and mostly visual things for Tommy Kyra. Um, da, 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 da. Ooh, 10 bucks start price. Let's see this one. Price for this, I think we'll see this go for 320,000 yen. Okay, and on to the very last one from Ryan Finkler. Ryan Finkler Pfeffer. I hope I pronounced that right. First time for you. He's like, hey, look, it's a Nissan Leopard. Haha, <laughs> Nissan Snow Leopard. And I laughed while I was eating my lunch when I heard that. It, so the Nissan Leopard is a car we haven't sold any of yet, but I'm dying to get my hands on this. It's a large Grand Tour Coupe. Two doors, kind of like a Supra, I guess. Or no, closer to a Soarer, right? Soarer for Toyota is the Supra, but in a luxury body with luxury interior. And so I'm guessing this is pretty similar to that. I think they're great looking cars. They were very popular in Japan when they first came out. They have a really good following, but a lot of people outside of Japan don't know them that well. Kind of a weird looking interior. I'm not sure if I like that that much. Maybe with a good cleaning, like the steering wheel buttons, first generation steering wheel buttons. It's up in Hokkaido, Oh, hence the snow. Okay, so there's no, there's, uh, no inspection on this one big stamp on there front end accident that hasn't been repaired it doesn't look like it's that bad but it might be worse than it looks lowered sunroof leather and aftermarket aero parts 107 383 probably the engine still works nissan uh, v30 Al ultima twin cam turbo okay so that's probably a vg30 same as a fair lady engine and if it's a twin cam turbo, that would be the twin turbo if it is the Fair Lady engine. But I don't know these cars enough. Is there a 3 liter engine that is not the VG30 that they also had as turbos? I know there is an RB30 engine, but I don't think that those ones are turbocharged. And I think that they came later than this, quite a bit later. Uh, 1990, importable to the States. Good chance it still runs, but you really don't know anything. All you have to do is go off of these pictures. That's all you get to know about this car. So... Usually cars like this sell for cheap, especially ones in Hokkaido or Sapporo or northern areas because the snow turns to rust or the snow plus car turns to rust. And so you're probably going to have a pretty bad rusty underside. But I'm guessing before the accident that's on here, the car was in decent running condition because when you see a car that has an accident unrepaired, it's usually someone got in an accident oh poop I need to get a new car not because something else happened to it so huh, it might be an interesting one to go for if you're one of those risky guys so mm, selling price I think we'll see it go for automatic transmission hey 180,000 yen maybe and that's going to be the end of this video so we got in under 30 minutes so I'm happy about that thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you next week